Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series on Oscar Wilde's The Decay of Lying. In this video we're going to be looking at what is aesthetic functionalism. Now, aesthetic functionalism is arguably the largest and most disparate position that we'll look at in the series. It simply is the view that art serves a societal purpose beyond simply representing reality or being for its own sake. Art is not simply a reflection of society, as the realists claim, or useless and for its own sake, as the aestheticists claim. Rather, art is for a purpose in society. Different functionalists think that art serves different purposes. These can include moral education, societal critique, political persuasion, psychological relief, or emotional fulfillment, to name a few. The uniting factor is that they think art serves a purpose in society, that art has a use beyond simply being art for its own sake, or being simply a representation of reality. One functionalist position is that a piece of art should serve a political purpose. This is a common in socialist art productions that argue art should be used as a means of demonstrating the harms of capitalism and the virtues of socialism. The plays of Bertolt Brecht are one example. However, agitation and propaganda as methods of persuasion are not unique to socialism. Political parties of all stripes use art as a means of gathering others to their cause. Religious groups in particular use art to attempt to justify their claims or convert others. These are often justified by the underlying argument for these positions. If it is a moral imperative to spread a certain religion or political moral view, then according to these functionalists, there's a moral imperative for art to help spread that ideology. If the thing that you should do is spread socialism or Islam, the artists also have a moral responsibility to do that and therefore should be using their art to do that, not be going off and making art for art's sake or trying to represent reality accurately. Another functionalist position is that art should be used for education. Sometimes this is historical education, art capturing important events and figures in history in a way that they will be remembered, but more often it's moral education. Stories that have morals where the villains are punished and the virtuous are rewarded. Or cautionary tales where those who do things that are offensive to society receive their comeuppance to convince others to follow the ethical rules of society. Similar to the political case, this is often justified through the claim that there is a moral requirement to get people to follow the ethical rules of society, and therefore the artist's artistic tools should be used to accomplish that task. Once again, if our goal is the moral education of society, if we have a deep moral responsibility to educate society, and we think that art is an effective tool to do that, we seem to have a moral responsibility to use art to do exactly that, to engage in the moral education of children, society, etc. Functionalism also includes people who hold that the purpose of art is to get some psychological benefit. In some cases, this means that art should provide people with pleasure or fulfill their desires. For others, like Aristotle with respect to tragedy, the purpose of art is to purge out negative emotions. Note that this is importantly different from the aestheticist position that we should be making art for its own sake. The aestheticists have the goal of beauty for its own sake, though they do sometimes use arguments related to pleasure or happiness to show how art is superior to nature, how the grass portrayed in an artistic piece seems softer and all the more pleasant than the reality of hard, bumpy grass in the real world. The goal for functionalists is to pleasure, is, is pleasure or psychological benefit itself, and if that could be gotten in another way, the art could be disposed of, whereas for the aestheticist, that's never the case. For the aestheticist, the end goal is the art in itself, even if that they think that one of the virtues of art in itself is that it is more pleasurable or should be more pleasurable than reality. Another potential goal of art fits somewhere in between the functionalist and the realist positions, which is social critique. Satire attempts to critique society by holding a mirror up to it. It doesn't try to be perfectly realistic or representative. Rather, it takes the goal of art as critiquing society by exposing its flaws. Satire can have the benefits of a little bit of all three of these positions. It's something of a realistic mirror of society. It also serves to present kind of a functionalist critique or moral argument, and it can in some ways be art for its own sake in that it's quite funny and poignant and beautiful at the same time. 
Now, the functionalist positions are so different that objections to them as a whole are few and far between. We might object from the aestheticist standpoint that any functionalist account of art is not really true art, since it's being used to serve some purpose beyond pure art itself, and so it's no different from uh, a craft, that it's, it's equating the same as uh, creating an advertisement to uh, making art. There's an, some important difference there. They might claim that this is in some way a corruption of what art is supposed to be. The realist might object that all of these fail to accurately portray the world, in some way lying to their audiences and forsaking truth. One might object to the political and moral versions of functionalism because they don't actually achieve their goals and often aren't so heavy-handed as to completely destroy any actual artistic potential. Most people are aware when they're being fed propaganda. The moralist might respond that art is simply another way of having a dialogue about ideas and it's not meant to be hidden indoctrination. Depending on the particular style of the art promoted, this may ring more or less true. It seems that some pieces of art are attempting to have a real dialogue about issues in the world, whereas some are just trying to force an idea down your throat and straw man any opponents. In terms of the psychological purposes of art, it seems like many of these psychological needs might be fulfilled in other ways, but we do still value art in itself. It seems like pleasure or the ability to express emotions could be achieved through various different methods, but we still put some special value on art. Even if we could feel emotions or get happiness from other sources, it seems that we would still value aesthetic beauty. We would still want stories for their own sake. It seems like psychological pleasure, at least, is not sufficient to explain why we make art, even if that is a component of it. What do you think? Should art serve a purpose? Should it be used for moral education, political propaganda, or just to make people happy? Stay tuned for future videos applying these positions to a range of issues in contemporary culture. Watch this video and more here at Carneades.org. Subscribe if you like this video. Hit that notification bell if you want to make sure you don't miss future videos. Support us on Patreon uh, to make sure the channel sticks around and stays skeptical, everybody.